Hey guys, welcome back to Little Kitchen Name. It's me, Ella. Uh, this is another episode of crocheting chat, except this time I'm not crocheting. I'm actually frogging. <laughs> uh, I got this. This was going to be an afghan, but I got tired of working on it. <laughs> so I'm frogging it and just winding it back up around the stain. So I thought I would just film a crocheting chat and chat while I'm frogging this. Um, there are noises in the background because I'm doing laundry. I'm hoping it's not too loud, but... It's life. <laughs> I got my computer right here with uh, a few comments pulled up on it that people have written. I just tighten my leg up on the table. It's very wobbly. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just going to do some of them while frogging a blanket. <laughs> and hopefully I can get it frogged because I'm going to start working on Christmas stuff soon for a Christmas fair that I'm going to be doing. And I need some red. I got two big skeins. These are the Jumbo Red Heart Super Saver Cherry, I think. And uh, I'm going to be needing a lot for Santa and stuff. But yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and read off the first one on the list. Um, and it's from Kaylee Connor. And her first question is, uh, what is your favorite part about being a mom? <laughs> That's kind of a hard one to answer. Because, I mean, obviously being a mom is pretty cool, but it's also really stressful. Way more stressful than I ever thought it was going to be. And people don't tell you stuff like that when you're about to have a baby. I'm going to move y'all just a little bit. There you go. <laughs> people, um, they don't tell you the bad parts, usually. Uh, let me get this over here. About being a mom the tantrums and stuff you know you don't a lot of it you just kind of figure it on the way but there's a lot of good that goes with the bad and you know you got to take both of it I guess my favorite one of my favorite parts about being a mom is watching Jesse learn stuff and figure out you know new things frog 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 <laughs> um especially now you know he just turned two on May 1st so he's He's learning a lot and he's you know he's every day he's changing he's starting to talk a whole lot more and he he's getting you know he does he knows his alphabets and stuff and he can read all of the alphabets he know he knows them when he sees them and he's getting better with numbers and he's getting better with like he can count up to about 20 something <laughs> before he starts getting confused but he he'll count things now like when he has like gummies he'll count one, two, three, he'll count them like that. Or he'll say that he has two of whatever he has. And it's just really cool to see someone who's so little and tiny and only been around for two years is doing all this stuff. It's really, um, it's just really cool to see everything that he learns how to do. And it's fun to watch him try to do things that we do. Like he's getting to the point now where he's trying to dress himself or put his shoes on and it's just it's awesome to see him do stuff like that I think that's my favorite part about being a parent or being a mom, a mom is um, having trouble <laughs> is watching him uh, learn different things okay I lost my groove what happened okay here we go <laughs> uh, I should have got my ball binder out but I didn't want to dig it out <laughs> so I'm just gonna wind it up on here but, um, yeah, I think that's the favorite part of being a mom. What's your favorite part of being a mom? <laughs> or parent, whichever. Or grandparent or aunt or whatever. It's just, it's cool to see them learn stuff. I hate frogging stuff. Big, that's big. <laughs> the second part of her little question was... What is one of your favorite things you've ever made? And she put in parentheses, whether it's um, crochet crafts, food, do-it-yourself do type things. Let me think about my crochet stuff. Let's see here. My favorite thing that I ever crocheted so far, <laughs> or one of them. One of my favorite things that I've ever crocheted is the blanket that I put on my couch around Christmas time. It's, just, it's called the Scandinavian Snowflake, Snowflake Blanket, I think, Afghan. And it's by the Crochet Crowd. Um, I can't remember if Mikey designed it or if Dan did. I'm kind of thinking it's David Dan's pattern. I can't remember. But I love that afghan. I loved making it. I was pregnant with Jesse when I made it. And um, 
I don't know, I just love it. I just think it's so pretty and I, I love how it looks, you know, and I think I did a really good job on it. Uh, another thing that I really liked that I crocheted recently was the giant octopus. I think it turned out really cool, but I probably will never make another one because they're, it's a lot of work. Um, hmm. I don't know. I like everything that I make, obviously. Well, almost everything. I've made a few things I was like, ugh. I like that monkey recently. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think my Scandinavian snow blank snowflake blanket, I don't know why I can't say that, is about my favorite thing, personally, that I've ever made. And it's also the one that I use the most. Well, maybe not the most, but I do use it. Because I do have, um, dishcloths and I made a bag put in Jesse's closet to put his socks in because he doesn't have a dresser yet because I'm too afraid to put one in there. I'm afraid he'll flip it over. And um, <laughs> we use that every day, you know, putting his socks in and take them out. I really like that. I like having things around the house that I use. Another thing that I use pretty much every day is our crochet bag holder. <laughs> Although I'm trying to cut down getting plastic bags at the store. I kind of wish where I was from charged you for them, like in some places, because then it would, you know, people probably wouldn't get them as much. I've been buying um, reusable bags. I, I bought another one yesterday, a Sim Sim one, because I want to have enough on hand that when I go get groceries, they'll all fit. And I think I probably have enough now to make them all fit in my reusable bags. And I like taking them to thrift stores and stuff with me. And plus, I think reusable bags, this is totally random, <laughs> it has nothing to do with that question, but I think they make good gift bags because you can, you can get all kinds of them with all kinds of cute little pictures on them, like at Dollar Tree, uh, and you can put toys or whatever, you know, whoever it's for in there, and they can reuse the bag. I think that's neat. I've done that a few times. Oh, uh, what else? Crafts? I don't really do a whole lot of crafts, like, you know, like before recently. I guess some of my favorite crafts that I have made that's not crochet would be my uh, drawstring bags. They're definitely my most used crafts. Um, my scrapbook, I like it. I don't hardly ever work on it, but I like looking at the bits that I did do. Uh, I should have got my ball winder. <laughs> frog, frog, frog. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. What else? Food. Favorite foods I've made. Okay. I've talked about it before on the Facebook group. I don't know if I talked about it on here, but we made, uh, we found a recipe on Pinterest. We, me and Devin, for honey garlic meatballs, I think is what it's called. I'll link it below. Um, that is one of both of our favorite meal, meals. And when I make it, it makes probably three meals worth for us. Usually it'll be dinner the night that I make it. And then the next day we'll eat it for lunch and then dinner again because uh, it makes a lot of meatballs and uh, they are so good and they're really good with mashed potatoes they'd probably be good with rice or something like that uh, they're good by themselves <laughs> i like anything that has like an asian need taste to it anything with soy sauce or teriyaki or anything like that and honey i like that flavor um What's another recipe that I make a lot? Uh, there's a really simple chicken one that I make that's just seasonings on chicken and bait that we eat it a lot too. It's not even got a name. I think it's just salt, pepper, onion, garlic powder, and paprika, and a little pinch of cayenne pepper. And then you just mix it on the chicken and cook it. And then there's another rub that I put on roast and stuff. It's on Pinterest. I'll link it below too. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's just it's like a brown sugar, uh, spicy, sweet type rub. It's really good. It, it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It like crisps up good on the meat and it makes it crunchy and just delicious. <laughs> I'll link all those below if I can find their links. I have them, I have a, in my kitchen I have a, a binder that I every time we try a recipe that we like and I will make again I either print it off or just copy it down and stick it in that binder so that I can just grab it without having to go on Pinterest and try to find the uh, recipe I'm looking for so that's cool uh, 
Let's see here. Kaylee also asked later, it was a different comment, but she said, have you ever done a pattern from a yarn wrapper? No, I'm not. <laughs> I rarely even look at them because usually, usually on yarn wrappers, the type of yarn I buy, which is like Red Heart and stuff, it's either Afghans or like hat and scarf combos. And I just don't ever make those because mm -mm -mm. I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, recently, last year or so, I've been mostly wanting to do amigurumis and they're never on the wrapper. I have seen some that I thought I might do, but then I never did. I never keep the right purse. Um, I usually end up losing them or Jesse runs off with them anyways. But yeah, I've never done a wrapper or pattern off a wrapper. What else did she say? She also said, or have you gotten all your patterns online? Uh, the majority, <coughs> excuse me, the majority of my patterns are from online. And the majority of the online ones were free. <laughs> I do buy some patterns when I want them, and I get a lot of paid for patterns for free with coupon codes or some kind of like deal thing that the designer might be doing. Um, but yeah, like I'd say 98% of my patterns are from the internet and more specifically Ravelry. Uh, and then the other little bit, I do have some crochet pattern books that I've either bought in or been gifted to have patterns in them. Yeah, that's pretty much it because um, I don't know it's just it's easier for me to get patterns online you know because you can go to Ravelry or Pinterest or whatever and look look up crochet pattern whatever you're looking for and find it super quick and <coughs> I don't like buying pattern books a lot because you know if I'm not gonna make every pattern in that book it's not kind of it's not really worth it to buy it to me um, I would probably buy amigurumi pattern books, but probably not anything else. Unless someone, unless it was like a commission and I couldn't get like a PDF or something of it, I would buy the book. But I would also put that into the price of the item. But yeah, I um, and I don't remember if, I think someone asked this, but I can't remember if I answered it. Some, well yeah, it was about books. It was like how I read my books whether it's like real books or on my phone or Kindle or whatever but with patterns I I would prefer to have a printed copy because then I could like throw it in my project bag and not, and not get separated or something but uh, most of them are on my phone uh, or on my laptop I usually use my phone to do my patterns off of because I'll be sitting around like like I'm right now on the couch and Jesse will be playing or whatever and I can just sit there and like read my pattern and then do it and then read a few lines and then do it. Um, <coughs> or I'll sit like I am right now with the laptop on the table beside the couch. And uh, I think I'm breathing in yarn fibers and it's making me cough. <laughs> um, the laptop over here, like I will watch either YouTube on my phone or laptop and then whichever one I'm using for YouTube or Hulu or whatever, the other one will be the pattern. Because Jesse usually watches TV on the TV. Um, yeah. Uh, and if I have a pattern book, I don't really like doing patterns out of books. Um, with pattern books, those are the ones, the patterns that I usually do when Jesse's not here. Because um, he hasn't learned to respect books yet. He can only have the hard books still. Because he'll rip and stuff. <clears throat> And it's just kind of awkward to have a big floppy because, you know, pattern books are usually soft cover. So they're like floppy and it's hard to have it sitting somewhere and then you drop it and then you lose your page and you have to find it. So I do typically, like those kinds of um, patterns from books, I wait till Jesse's not here or sleeping to work on. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? The last one that I have copied over, I'm sure there's more in the comments I still have to get. <laughs> but it's from Melissa Crafts. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> And she, her first one is How Did I Learn to Crochet, which I have talked about that before, but she's, she may not have seen that video. Uh, it's probably like the first crocheting chat, I can't remember. Uh, my mom taught me how to crochet. You know, long story short, uh, she taught me how to chain and do single crochets back and forth. Maybe half double crochets too. But I know for sure single crochets and chaining. <laughs> and then the rest of what I learned, I learned from mostly uh, the internet. Uh, 
when I learned, I didn't really, I mean, like, I knew what YouTube was, but I didn't really know that there was tutorials and stuff on there and crochet, you know, how to use and all that. So, I'm, I learned it from reading blogs, uh, people's articles on blogs and stuff. And then I discovered uh, the crochet crowd and learned a lot from there. And then I discovered YouTube and learned even more, you know, and I'm still learning more. There's still a lot of stitches I don't know how to do. And, you know, I can't remember how to do every one of them. You know, sometimes I'll be doing a pattern. I'm like, oh, darn, how do you do the popcorn stitch? I forgot because there's popcorn and bubble and all that. And it's really similar but slightly different. So I still have to look it up. Or, um, and every now and then I come across something I've never done before. So I have to go learn it. So, you know, I, I started learning when I was 12. My mom started teaching me. And then I just basically did super easy back and forth stuff until I was in my teenage teenagehood <laughs> um, and that's when I started getting really into actually learning it myself the very first pattern I ever completed from a pattern a written pattern was a frog hat <laughs> it was like a beanie with big frog ears on or eyes on top of it and uh, that was the very first thing I ever finished from a pattern and my very first amigurumi was a little bunny rabbit so I think my mom has it. I think she still has it. Um, yeah. I love that I learned how to read patterns. I learned how to read patterns super quick. And I think what helped me was I learned to mostly to crochet from people writing. You know, instead of watching videos, I learned it from reading people's blogs and stuff. So reading a pattern to me was super easy. But I still don't know how to read a chart. And I really want to learn how to read charts. Because there's a lot of, um, like, Russian and Dutch and... Uh, I think Japan I think it's Japan has a lot of really nice patterns but they're in charts and some of their terms are different from like our charts and the the uh, European you know it's just all different <laughs> I hate that it's all different I wish it's like a, there was a standard you know but I'd like to learn how to read charts and yeah I really want to get a um, what's it called I think it's a stitch dictionary. I got one on my Amazon wish list, and I'm, I'm gonna get it just next time I remember to go look on there. Uh, because I'd like to have a book like that so that if I want to design something myself, I can just really quick flip through and find the stitch that I'm looking for, you know, instead of having to look it up on online. This yarn's gonna suck when I go to use it because it's all it's wrapped around both ends, but that's all right. I should have wound it. I should been lazy. I should have dug out my winder, but oh well. I'm sure I'll use all this because for that Christmas fair, I'm going to be making a lot of Santas and Mrs. Claus sets and probably some little uh, ornaments and elves and things that have red on them. So I'm sure I'll use it up. Uh, Melissa also asked, is there a meaning behind Jesse's name? And um, there is. <laughs> when we found out we were pregnant, we, we knew we wanted to use family names. So that's just how we are. You know, we're sentimental people. Um... And Devin's dad is a huge part of our life. He's helped us a lot from the beginning of our relationship. Up and, you know, and still does. <laughs> He's a really awesome guy. <laughs> and I couldn't ask for a better, better father-in-law. And uh, his middle name is Jesse. So we knew we wanted to name... When we found out it was a boy, we knew we wanted to name him after our dads. And my dad's, my dad's first name was Jimmy. Devin's is Norman. And although I like the name Norman, I didn't really want Jesse to be named Norman. So we took what we did is we took both of our dad's middle names and used them. So Jesse's first name is Jesse, which is Norman's middle name, Devin's dad. And De Jesse's middle name is Dwayne, which is my dad's middle name. So it's Jesse Dwayne Roberts. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we just, we like passing down family names. Had Jesse been a girl, her name would have been Norma, N O R. Am I spot? Yeah, N O R M A. Norma Louise, because Norma would have been, you know, taken from Norman, and Louise is my mom's middle name. And I know if anyone knows about the uh, Psycho show and series, uh, the Bates Motel, that's the mom's name, Norma Louise. But it wasn't because of that. It was because that, you know, would have been named after both sides of the family. And I may still use that name if we were to ever have a girl. Because I just think Norma is a cute name. And Louise is always, you know, it's like a classic name. 
years ago, I wanted, if I had a girl, I wanted to name it after me because no one ever names their kids after the mom. You know, there's plenty of families that have like three and four generations in a row of guys named the same exact name just with a different number on the end of it. Uh, so I was going to have a daughter, if I had a daughter, I would have named her Ella May and uh, been named after me. Because no one ever does that. I don't know why that's not a thing. It's the same thing as naming a son after a dad. But I like Norma. So if we ever have a girl, we'll probably name her Norma. And if we have another boy, I have no idea what we're going to name him. Because <laughs> we're out of names. Because all the guys in my side of the family that I'm close to is my dad and my brother. And they're, they have the same name. My brother is a junior. So, I don't know what we would name another boy if we had a boy. I kind of thought James would be cute because it would be a play on my dad's name. And But then I'd have Jesse and James. <laughs> so, it would be Jesse James. I don't know. I guess I would have to figure that out if the time ever came. And we ever had another kid. Which I really don't know if we're going to do because Jesse's crazy. And I don't know if I can do that again. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here. Jesse's at my mom's right now. I'm almost done with this. It's getting there. Uh, she's bringing him back later this evening. It's a little after 2 right now, I think. Well, it's 2.30. <laughs> um, tonight is the high school graduation. And my nephew, my oldest nephew, is graduating high school. And also my, I guess he's like a brother-in-law, is graduating also. But I'm not really going to go over there because I don't want to have to deal with Jesse over there. But my mom is because my nephew is graduating. So she's going to come drop Jesse off when she's on her way over there. Because we live really close to the high school. So yeah. And um, <clears throat> this week is, uh, this Friday is Kat's last day at school. So starting next Monday she'll be here. Uh, Monday through Friday except for like holidays like on Memorial Day she'll be at home because uh, they'll be home they'll be off of work um, and I think she might go on vacation with her grandmother this summer at some point for like a week or so um, so she won't be here then but she'll be here pretty much Monday through Friday up until the second to the last week of August whenever school starts back <laughs> which is fine because she helps a lot with Jesse and um, She's the closest thing to a daughter I'll have for a while, so it's cool. I love hanging out with her. She's probably watching. Hi, cat. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to try to teach her to crochet some more. She's learned a little bit from me already, but I want to... I told her that I would try this summer to teach her a little bit more, you know, like in-depth stuff. So that'll be fun. <clears throat> yeah. That was pretty much it. Oh, I guess I could talk about the weekend. It's only been 23 minutes, and I'm still... Frogging. <laughs> um, it was Mother's Day weekend this past weekend. Uh, it's my third Mother's Day. My first Mother's Day, Jesse was a week old. And my birthday was the day before it because uh, in 2016, Mother's Day was on the 8th of May. So he had just turned a, a week old and it was the day after my birthday that year, which was pretty cool. And um, but this weekend, Devin was off work again. He's been, he's pretty much going to be off work on weekends for a while, which is cool. Um, not good for my diet because when he's off of work, we eat out a lot. Like this weekend, we eat a lot. So I know I'm not going to lose any weight this week. But um, that's okay. Uh, what was I saying? All right, Saturday, what did we do Saturday? Saturday was Brandon, the one who's graduating tonight. It was his um, graduation party. Was that Saturday? Yes, that was Saturday. No, that wasn't Saturday. That was yesterday. <laughs> what did we do Saturday? Uh... Oh, was there a cookout? I can't even remember. <laughs> I know we went swimming because we took Jesse swimming. He went swimming last year a little bit. Well, floating. He was in a baby float. <laughs> this year we tried life jacket type thing, but it was pushing him forward. So we took that off and just put him in those little floaty arm things. And he was swimming. He was doing so good. He's, he's going to be swimming so good in just a few weeks. And he loved it. He kept saying he was taking a big bath. And, um... He loved it. He did keep choking on water, but he's got to learn to, you know, not breathe it in and not stick his mouth in the water. He kept trying to lick at the pool. Um, what did we do Saturday? I can't even remember. We played Pokemon Go a lot. I mean, Devin's been into that a lot lately. Uh, oh my gosh, how could I forget all day? I, 
I can't remember if we had a cookout on Saturday or not. I'm sure we did. We almost always do in summer at his dad's house. Isn't that crazy how it was just two days ago and I can't remember what happened. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> Sunday came around and um, me and Devin was talking and we decided that we'd like to go to, on a date uh, Sunday evening to go to the movies. Because we haven't been to the movies at all since we've been together. It's been years since either of us have been to the movie movies and it, mine my problem is I'm really frugal slash cheap and I always you know every time we've talked about going to the movies I'd be like well it's gonna cost so much money to go to the movies we might as well just go get something to eat and rent a movie you know and go home and save thirty dollars <laughs> and um but this time we finally just decided we were just gonna go to the movies because we had the extra money and um so I messaged my mom and she said that she would watch Jesse for us and but before that we had to go to Brandon's graduation party so uh, it was about two something when we took Jesse up to my mom's. Um, dropped him off, then we went and got some Pokeballs, and then we went to Devin's dad's for that party, and we stayed for an hour or so there, and then we went to the neighboring town where the movie theater is, because we have a drive-in theater here, but it was playing two movies that we don't we don't care to see. Um, it's really cheap. It's seven dollars a person to watch two movies, and you can bring your own food. You know, it's driving. So I, I love love the idea of going there because you get to watch you know two movies, and you can bring all your own snacks. <laughs> but uh, they also have concessions, but it's probably expensive. I don't know. We've always just taken our own food. Um, so we went to the movie theater and we watched A Quiet Place, which is like a. We thought it was a paranormal movie. Like we thought it was about like a poltergeist or something. Turns out it's not. It's like about alien things but it was still a really good movie sad it had sad moments but it was a really good movie and it ended pretty good um it was kind of creepy there was a few moments where i was like ah and i definitely jumped a lot <laughs> jump scares and um we didn't get any food there because food at movie theaters is expensive it would have been 14 dollars and something to get a popcorn and a drink one popcorn drink i'm done with that so we just got a large drink. We didn't get a large drink, and their large drinks are ginormous. It's like a liter of drink, and we still had half of that when we left. So we were both drinking out of it. So we watched that movie, and it was a lot of fun. We were two of 13 people in the theater that we went into because that movie's been out for a few weeks, so it wasn't like a hot movie people were running to see. I like going to the movies when it's empty like that because it's you know it's it's just it's a cooler experience I guess. So we watched that movie, and then we got out and we went. Pokemon in again. We got a bunch of Pokeballs and fought some gems. Um, and then uh, my mom was keeping Jesse all night, so we um, we went to Devin's dad's and we went swimming in his pool. It was evening and we swam until it was dark. With and then the siblings came out and it was all, us and all the kids. It was all fun swimming and just standing around and talking afterwards. And then after we left there, we went to Walmart to get some snacks. <laughs> And we rented two Redbox movies. We rented The Shape of Water and The Greatest Showman on Earth. And then we stayed up and watched both of those movies. By the time we went to bed, it was like one something, almost two. But it was worth it because we don't ever get to do stuff like that. So we, um, we came home and we ate some leftovers from the cookout earlier that day, the party. And it was uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. And uh, that's what Devin ate. I ate, um, he sm his dad also smoked a a Boston butt and it was just so good so we uh, we ate and watched those movies and it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed both of those movies The Shape of Water was a little weird but it was good <laughs> and The Great Show on Earth, on Earth was good but I love musicals anyway yeah and then this morning we got up and I had to run a few errands I had to run to the post office and I, we went to Walmart and we took back the Redbox movies but then I got another one I got I, Tanya I just watched it. It's okay, but it got a lot of elf bombs in it. Um, I I wanted to see that because I was four, almost four when it happened. But I do have like vague memories of seeing it on TV and stuff, and definitely hear my mom talk about the Hotania Harding, uh, Nancy Kerrigan thing. And when I was a little girl, I was a huge fan of figure skating. I had like Michelle Kwan posters and stuff, but. Um, I watched it. It's an okay movie, but not buyable. <laughs> That's how me and Devin rate our movies, whether we would buy it or not. So, like, it's not buyable. But, um, 
yeah. Then, what did we, oh, that's what we did. We went to Walmart. We Pokemon. We went to the post office. I think that's everything. Um, I might have some errands to do tomorrow, and I for sure will Wednesday. Because <laughs> I gotta go uh, pay some bills and all that fun grown-up stuff. Yeah. I don't know. We wanted to go to the Knoxville Zoo this weekend because on Sunday, if we had went on Sunday, me and Jesse would have been free because four and under is always free. And on Sunday, mothers were free. But it's a three-hour drive from our house to there and then being there and then three-hour drive back. And I just didn't want to do that. What did we do Saturday? Instead of... Because we were going to go to the zoo Saturday and then we changed... Oh, I know what we did. Saturday morning. I remember now... There was a huge yard sale at the fairgrounds in the county next to us. It raises money for uh, the local schools. Like you, you can buy a booth and then the money you pay for the booth goes to the schools and then all the money you make off your stuff you keep. It was like that type of thing. We went to that and walked all around that and it was huge. We walked like three miles around it with Jesse pulling him in his little red wagon. We didn't buy a single thing because me and Devin... We're like very picky people when it comes to buying stuff like that. We wanna we wanna need it, you know, like I have to have that in my life. We're that kind of people. We don't wanna just buy a bunch of junk that's gonna clutter up and end up being donated anyways. So we went to that and then we stopped at a couple other yard sales on in our town on the way back, like church sales. Because I don't know about in your area, but in our area, if a church has a yard sale, it's usually a good deal. <clears throat> Cause they usually raise in money for their trips and missionaries and stuff and it's everything's cheap because they're just wanting to try to raise money for their trip and they if they have baked goods it's always good we've learned that from years of yard selling <laughs> but um we bought we mostly bought just some toys for jesse i think that's all we bought and then uh then we did the rest of the stuff i said on saturday i completely spaced out on what we did saturday morning but that was it we were going to get up early and go to the zoo and take cat with us but uh even though we would have had to pay full price that day because um Devin wanted to go Saturday but then for some reason we just changed our minds we didn't want to do the long trip you know because it would have been essentially six hours driving with two kids and then being at the zoo for probably three hours it would have been just an all-day stressful trip so um we're gonna wait and go to the zoo later this summer I'll, I might even take Kat alone because uh it'd be cool to have just me and her you know one-on-one -on -one time if I can get Jesse a babysitter but I'll have to have Devin taken to work also and then pick them up later. Uh, that might be what I have to do tomorrow because I have some errands to run and I may have to drop him off at work and then run the errands and then pick him up later at night. Which is fine. We've done that a million times. We're planning on getting a second car next year. But we got to wait until next year so it's annoying. But yeah. I guess that's about it. This is 33 minutes long. I need to go ahead and go quit blabbing and go. I did finish fro frogging this thing and it's big and floppy and looks like a worm. It's going to be really weird to use, but I'll use it. Now I, um, got to put it in my box. I already pulled out all the Christmas colored yarns <laughs> that I thought I might be using just to have it on hand and put it in a box on my table. And, yeah. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. As usual, all my links will be down below. Um, my Instagram, my Ravelry group, my Ravelry page, and my Facebook group. The Facebook group is the most active. Um... I'll also link below my Knit Crate link if you're interested. And the coupon code will be near it for 20% uh, off your first box. And I think that's everything. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.